Ah. Well, welcome, friends. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to this very special edition of Spotlight on Music. I'm your host, Bishop Andre Woods. And what a joy it is to share with you on this evening. Listen, we got a very, very, very special guest going to be with us in just a moment. What I want you to do is to like and share, like and share. Join us in the comment section, share with us, greet us, thumbs thumbs up in your hearts. If you got comments or questions, certainly we welcome you to share them in the comment section. Uh, it's been such a glorious week and we thank God for those of you that are joining us tonight. And uh, we want you to sit back and relax as, as we get ready to talk to our guests. Uh, tonight, we are blessed to have one of God's best who's ever done it, and right here in the city of Detroit, in the person of Arthur Ray. I just want to give you just a little, little bit of information. Arthur Ray currently teaching his teaching role, uh, teaching grades uh, K through 12 uh, at Detroit Academy, teaches drama and music uh, for grades five, uh, K through five, and teach middle and high school choirs. Uh, upcoming shows, uh, he's the director of Meeting Me, to be uh, staged at December 22nd, uh, 2022. Choir rector, rector, re no, choir recital, I need my glasses. Choir <laughs> recital, November uh, 2022. Uh, the Lord has blessed him, he is an actor. Uh, this is my life's passion, starred in uh, Hastings movie, 2019, currently beginning uh, filming Easy Path movie uh, tomorrow, which is October 1st, uh, 2022, with director Dolores Flynn. Uh, Mrs. Flynn recently released the film Why Me, just won the top shorts film festival of 2022. His church affiliation uh, started at everybody's tabernacle, Bishop Edosha Hooks, currently connected uh, to many church organizations, including the Church of Abundant Life, Dr. Benjamin Stanley Baker, and Calvary AME Zion, Reverend David Stevenson, family, parents, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Arthur Ray Sr., and two sons, uh, daughters, grandchildren, including Minister Amir Ray, of Leland Baptist Church, great grandchild, great <laughs> aunt, uh, Bessie Smith, Express of the Blues, great renowned singer, uh, musician, minister of music, uh, the pastor Zion Hope Baptist Church from 1980 to 1998, New Light Baptist Church from 1998 to 2005. Currently, serving at Calvary AME Zion Community. Uh, he's serving in the community. Find your work. And um, there is a YouTube uh, clip on that. All right, some past school shows and more. We got some chronicles here. Because of COVID in uh, December of 2021, we created a short film which depicted students' thoughts and feelings uh, of the COVID epidemic. And there is a video on that. Uh, Showtime at the Apollo. Now I witnessed that one of those times. <laughs> a great feature uh, featuring the young people at the school. Some years ago at another school and it produced a show when the students became great performers via acting and choreography. There is a video on YouTube of that. Stage show, the old man. He was cast in the stage production where he played a 99 year old man. There's a video on that on YouTube. Why ain't this on the news? A show that he wrote for students telling the story of positive events that never makes it on the news. All of this is on YouTube, friends. Detroit, this is our home, Spirit of Detroit Award. And he produced this show again at, at his current school, 
and also received the Spirit of Detroit Award. His podcast, uh, Stages with Arthur Ray Jr. Uh, there are several episodes. Uh, in episode one, he shared the path that led him to performing arts. In episode five, uh, he interviewed Anthony White, the director of Detroit Youth Choir. Yeah, hey, yeah, hey, Detroit Youth Choir. Shortly <laughs> after their appearances on American Got America's Got Talent, and then he has his episodes posted. Uh, so we thank God for all that this brother has done. Very influential in the landscape of the music of Detroit, Michigan. When we talk about music, we must uh, mention the name Arthur Ray. And I want to welcome you, my friend, uh, to this uh, platform, Spotlight on Music. So good to have you here with me. Thank you so much, Bishop Woods. It's a pleasure and an honor to be able to be a guest here on Fellowship of Music Awards Spotlight along with you. Yeah, man. Listen, God has so graciously favored you and you've done so many things. Uh, uh, and I want you to take a moment uh, and take us back and how the Lord blessed you, how you got started in music. Well, I'm going back now. I'm going way, way, way back, all the way back to the 1960s, way back to everybody's tabernacle right there on the corner of Pulford and Meldrum, which is the church that I grew up in, up under the leadership of the late great Mother Bishop Hooks, the Docia Hooks. And this church was kind of like right down the street from St. James. So we had that kind of a connection there. And as a child in everybody's tabernacle, I used to stand by the organ and watch one of the greatest organists ever. They called her the queen of the Hammond organ, as Sister Ruthie Smith. And I used to stand by the organ and fan her. And I always said, Lord, I want you to bless me, bless me with this talent, bless me with this talent. And, and so he did, and so he did. I would play piano behind her sometime as a kid when she was playing the organ, and she was um, very influential in my early beginnings in music. When I think about, when, when I think about Ruthie, I think about how spirit filled she was and and how that that spirit um, uh, came path and affected the church. She was just filled with the spirit. And regardless to whether you were or not, if you it was just like a bush that was on fire. If you came around her, you were gonna catch on fire. You were gonna burn as well. And and that's something I, I'd like to think that I um uh, I kind of got from her and learned from her. And I carry that with me at all the churches that I've been at thus far. Oh man, that's, you took me back when we was talking about earlier. Everybody's tapping out. Everybody knew everybody's tapping out. <laughs> right, right. Yes. I mean, the city knew Mother Hooks. She was, I mean, a pioneer mm -hmm. when it comes to ministry and churches especially for the women in ministry. Uh, uh, she stands among those who paved the way. Yes, yes, you know, yes. And, and was accepted, just a giant in this city and meant so much. So many great people uh, come through that church. Absolutely, yes. yes, yeah. I, I remember as a kid, you know, years ago when, uh, when pastors would have their church at, pastor's anniversary. In those days, it would last a full week. And it would start on Sunday and go to the next Sunday. I think lately they've started doing it like all month long. But in those days, they did it for the full week. And I can remember, Bishop Woods, I can remember some of the greatest ministers coming through on Bishop Hooks's anniversaries. I mean, people mm -hmm. like people like uh, Reverend J. Allen Caldwell, um, Reverend C. L. Franklin. I mean, these were people that you would think would not. And at that time, it was a problem. I call it a problem, a challenge between what they call sanctified churches 
and Baptist churches. And of course, we were considered to be quote unquote sanctified. But all of these big Baptist ministers were coming through for uh, Mother Hooks. And I learned later that she was instrumental in getting a lot of them started. She was dynamic. I mean, I got introduced to her through my grandfather when he took us yeah, down yeah. there one time. <laughs> right. Girl, you know, I'm like, yeah, yeah. That's how I met Ruthie. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, she was at at uh, the musician at Swanson's funeral. Mm -hmm. But I never saw I never saw anybody like that. <laughs> she was stand up on those foot pedals, playing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then get off the organ, dance, then get back on, pick back up. Right. And, and she had eight inch heels on. Yeah. Man. <laughs> She'll be beating the bass pedals with eight inch heels on. Yes. Yes, sir. She was just awesome. And uh, uh, she left a legacy for us. I mean, I mean, how can we forget such a person who, who just did so much for uh, uh, music, just an innovator? Yes, you know, yes. we got a lot of pathfinders, but not a whole lot of trailblazers. Absolutely. And she was one, man. She was yes. one. Yes. And I remember yes. those days. I remember coming down to Neapolitan, down yes. to down to Bishop Kerr's church, because our our church with our church with fellowship with most of the spiritual churches that were yes. in the city. Mother Hooks was everywhere. You know, everywhere. everywhere, everywhere. So that that was quite an experience, and and that was very influential, and and my yeah. getting started in music. I remember when I went to um, excuse me, excuse me. I'm I'm you know I'm suffering here because I'm yeah, telling I, I I'm telling I was telling you I'm dealing with shingles, and I've been off work for the last few weeks, and so I I'd like to just encourage anyone out there, if you have not gotten your shingles vaccination and you are of age, yes, the Lord has blessed you to be here, please go and get it. Cause I'm telling you, this is no joke. This is no joke, but God is still good. And I'm still here, still here. So I remember as a kid, when I was in, in high school, I went to Denby high school. And at that time, Denby was, 3,000 strong and 3,000 of them just about were all Caucasian with the exception of four African-American people. Mm -hmm. And I was a part of the, the thespian group, which is a theatrical group there at the school. And for my um, beginning performance, I had to sing. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I asked Ruthie to come and play for me. And I sang Over the Rainbow. I will never forget this. I sang mm -hmm. Over the Rainbow. And Ruthie came and played for me. She was just that that type of a, that type of a person, always willing to, to encourage and, and there for me. I, I really appreciate her for that. And she got me really started with music. I moved on from Everybody's Tabernacle. And later on, I became the musician at a church called New Home Baptist Church which mm -hmm. was on force between St. Alban and Dubois, a little storefront church there. And I played there for a few years until the Lord blessed me. One program, there was a, a quartet program and one of the ladies came through and she said, you, my, you're playing so well. She said, my church choir needs a musician. And she invited me to come over to Zion Hope Baptist Church. Mm -hmm. That was way back in the in 1980, and I went to Zion Hope, and I at that time I was playing for one choir that was a famous choir in those days. It was called the Martinaires, oh, named wow. after named after the pastor who was Bishop P. M. Martin, right. and they they told me that he used to come on the radio. He used to come on the radio in the morning, long before I got there, and they used to call him P. M. and A. M. And so, <laughs> and so um, I went over to play for the Martinez and I was playing on the first and third Sunday there at that time. And then that went from that position into the Minister of Music of, of Zion Hope. And I was there for 18 years. Mm. From 1980 until 1998. 
and it was wonderful years, many, many memories, so many wonderful people I met during that, that time. Some of the greatest soloists in, in the city of Detroit. I met Sister Viola Fair, who used to sing with the trumpets at one wow. point. You know, she was a, a great soloist there at, at Zion Hope. Also Sister Cynthia McClinton, who just awesome, awesome singers there at Zion Hope. And we had an opportunity to just really, really praise the Lord during the time that I was there. Oh, man, yeah. The untold story, the history of it, you start calling the role of some of Detroit's finest soloists. And, and uh, I mean, it, it, we, we, we've been blessed in this city. There's so many, and thank God for those that are here and they're going on, but Man, do, do you remember Decatur Moore? And, I uh, do. Mildred Means? Yes, yes. Oh, mm -hmm. man. Yes, yes. And so then sweet. my my cousin through marriage was Dr. Velma Willis, you know? Oh, who, man. Yes, yes, my cousin through marriage. My son's, my son's family is Velma Willis's family. And yeah. so she 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 never made any difference to the fact that we were married relatives. We were all just relatives. She always called me cousin wherever we were. Yeah. Just awesome, awesome singers. She would come to Zion Hope and sing for me sometime. In fact, when I was when I was married, when my wedding was at everybody's tabernacle years ago, she actually sang the Lord's Prayer for that wedding. Yeah. Yes, yes. Beautiful. Dr. Velma Willis, nobody Dr. like Dr. Velma Willis. Yeah, nobody oh, like her. Nobody like her. Just when I need her most. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yep, that's my son. So, and so then that takes me right to, to what a wonderful segue into St. James. Because that takes me right to St. James, which was yeah, right, yeah. right down the street. And during those days back in the 80s, we would travel to St. James. It, all roads led to St. James at, at for the evening Sunday night service. Yeah, man. And, and I was I was one of the young musicians that was sitting there in the congregation watching you, and 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 the choir and and mm -hmm. Dr. Jimmy Dow and and all of you guys as you were praising the Lord. Nobody did the Lord's prayer like St. James did the Lord's prayer. Oh man. It's uh, it was awesome. Um, Reverend used to tell us all the time, you know, he, he would jokingly say, but he was serious. He said, y'all pray for me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> to preach everything I know, but I need y'all to sing everything y'all know. <laughs> he said, we, 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 got to, we got to make this thing work hand in hand. And you know what I love about that experience? I tell, tell it to everybody, you know, it's good to work in an environment where there's no intimidation, there is Absolutely. no envy, there's no jealousy, yes. but it's, yeah. it's, it's just team. Yes. You know, like they, like they say now, teamwork makes the dream work. Yes. And um, if, if, if musicians that are listening to us tonight, if they've never experienced that kind of work environment, you know, I encourage them to, 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 to uh, at least experience that because we learn from each other. And um, and that's the spirit I like, you know, uh, of the day gone by, you know. You know, we all would see each other and whenever we got a chance, support each other and and uh, cheer each other on. Yes, you know, yes. Somehow the enemy tried to creep in. And, and that's his job. Yeah, have mm -hmm. folks competing and comparing and all of that. And, and that's all in the mind. It's yeah. all in the mind. And it's nothing but a distraction. It's nothing but yeah. a distraction. We are we are to work together. You're talking about um, Pastor Nix. I remember I was at a dinner club years ago. This is the first time I actually met him personally. And I was uh -huh. at a dinner club called the Rhinoceros. And this was yeah. back in back in the 80s. And um one of my one of my good friends who I just really loved her singing was Sister Pinky Smith. Mm. 
Oh, and, man. And, and, and going back again. Yeah. And Sister Pinky Smith was singing at the Rhinoceros at that time. And so we yes. were there. We were there for her and having dinner. And then I look and I see Pastor Nix come in. And somehow we were in a conversation. And he said to me, he said, there's a fire on you. And I said, sir, <laughs> he said, there, there's a fire on you. He said, you don't know it yet, but there's a fire on you and it's going to come out. And I remember, I remember that. I will ne never forget that time when, when we had that, that little moment in time right there in the Rhinoceros Club. Yeah, 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 yeah man. Along with, with Sister Pinky Smith, who could really, really sing. And you're talking about humility and yeah. humbleness. Sister Pinky Smith could really sing, but she was the most humble person you've ever met. And sometimes I've met people now who, who can carry a tune from here to the door. And so all of a sudden, they think they are God's gift to the earth. And I'm telling you, whatever God has given you, he can take it away. Because your gift is to bless someone else with and I try my best to always be as humble as I can no matter where I am or what capacity I'm working in whether it's in the church or whether it's in school or whether it's in, on the stage or on film or wherever I know that what I have God has given it to me mm -hmm. in order in order to bless and serve someone else man and, that that is the key right there yeah yeah we, we're ministers of music and we've been blessed with these gifts to serve. Yep. Uh, what a blessing. What a blessing. What and a you, blessing. You, were spe you were speaking a minute ago about how ministers and musicians can work together um, in love and not a spirit of competitiveness. And, yeah. and when, when I moved from, from Zion Hope to New Light Baptist Church, I encountered that with Dr. Benjamin Stanley Baker. Yeah. Here is a minister who was somebody's minister, somebody's yeah. preacher. This, this man is somebody's preacher, but he was not intimidated by anyone because he was secure in what God had blessed him with. And we had that kind of a connection. I would go in on Sunday mornings and every Sunday morning I would meet with Pastor Baker and say, Pastor, so is there anything you need today? Anything you need? And he say, Ray, mm -hmm. you, 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 you do what the Lord has blessed you to do. And I, I never will forget, he'd say, I don't know much about music. He'd say, that's, that's your job. He'd say, I only know when it's right. <laughs> <laughs> He don't know much, but he know when it's right. He say, I only know when it's right. <laughs> and, and, and one thing I loved about Pastor Baker is nobody could go to Pastor Baker and say anything about music or the performing arts ministry uh, without him directing them right back to me. He would say, that's Ray's department. Uh, you got to go and talk to Ray about that. And he would make it very clear to me. He would say, I only know when it's right. He said, and if it's not right, I'm not going to the choir member. I'm coming to you because yeah. you're the one that's in charge of it. And so when the choir member come to me, I'm sending them back to you. And we had that kind of relationship. And I love him today for that. And I still stay connected with Pastor Baker. He, he is now... <clears throat> pastoring out here in Southfield. And I'm I'm still very connected to Pastor Baker because of the relationship that we developed during the time that I was at New Light. Yeah, yeah, that's great. He's well, at is, church, he's he, at Church of Abundant Life now in Southfield. Right, right. I've I've listened to some of his broadcasts by, yeah. by Facebook. Great, great teacher, great preacher. Um now now set this this clip up you're going to share with us. So people will be able to see some of your work uh, in the school system, your students. And uh, uh, I remember when you invited me to see that Showtime uh, on a, at the Apollo, man. Right, those, right. Those kids right. were just awesome, man. I mean, and uh, they, they, they had stage presence. They knew the music. They knew the choreography. You know, and 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 it was it was just such a fresh, fresh uh, production, and uh, and I know the parents. I was watching the faces of their parents and friends was just elated to see their 
their children, their neighbors, their, and the teachers, their students. And I'm sure you you was a proud teacher. Absolutely. You know, mm -hmm. uh, uh, yes. yes. So uh, would you have a clip you want to show? Share that, share that with us tonight. Well, well, Bishop Woods, what one thing my students know is that I don't do kiddie shows. So, yeah. you know, sometimes you go to the school and you'll see a little kitty show. You know, I'm a professional actor and I put professionalism on the stage. It doesn't make a difference to me how old you are. If you are on my stage, you're going to be a professional. And so this this clip that I'm going to show now is a clip from the, the show you were just speaking of, Showtime at the Apollo. And the kids were, um, they, they were becoming Gladys Knight in the Pips. All right. And... And I was so amazed at this particular act because we searched and searched and searched. And at the last minute, some of my uh, pips left their uniforms, their <laughs> costumes at home. Oh, wow. So we had, we had to go back to the costume room and some of the, some of the suits that they had on was big enough for me. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, that's all right. They're going to be pips with the big suits on. Uh -huh. And so here's a clip of, of a show I did when I was working at a school called G. White Academy. And, um, and they are um, bringing back to life and learning about the performers at the same time themselves, Gladys Knight and the pips. And that was just one little clip there from, from Gladys Knight and the Pips. This next clip, this next clip that I'll show is um, from the, the current school that I'm at now, which is Hope of Detroit Academy. And back during um, the COVID, right in the midst of the COVID crisis and last December, we weren't in school. So um, we came back to school for a week here and then a week off and it, the, the state was not allowing us to assemble as an audience. So ordinarily, when I would do a, a winter production with an audience, that was not going to be the case this year. So I said, you know, what if we make a film of the kids? What if we actually get a movie camera and shoot the shoot the kids and, and have them create their own production and tell us about COVID from a kid's perspective. So just a little, a few minutes of this here. I'm setting it up here in the beginning of this film. Create this miraculous film we will see today. Remember, as we say in drama and music class, you are what you think you are. You are great. You are successful. You are somebody. Let's get on with the show. Well, the superintendent of Detroit schools is suggesting a controversial and drastic move, calling for all K-12 through schools to close for the rest of this year. Full Michigan's COVID cases linked to the more contagious Delta variant are on the rise. The state is reporting more than 6,300 new cases tonight. Yeah, hi, Carolyn. We did speak to one Metro Detroit mom who's frankly confused about what to buy for her daughter as she still doesn't know whether she'll study from school or from home. But one thing is for sure, parents out there with kids that are heading back to school need to shop with safety in mind.
Today, I'm Christopher. And I'm Jangelo. We're here to investigate on the last year of COVID from a kid's point of view. I know it was a challenging time for adults. But what do you think us kids went through? So, I've never heard of a pandemic before, and now everybody's heard of it. The whole world, it's, it's different. They wouldn't even let us go to school. Well, it might be fun, but we can't keep going on like this. Somebody even told me that there are people dying from this thing called coronavirus. But in my neighborhood, we just call it corona. This past school year was something else. Let's talk about kids' experience of COVID. I'm a student at a wonderful school called the Book Detroit Academy. And tonight, we're going to be exploring the adventures of kids during COVID and our drive to excel anyway. And, and that's just a little bit of the opening there of the movie. And it went on for 45 minutes. And it went through various scenes. And the kids were enthralled because they felt like they were movie stars. <laughs> they felt like they were movie stars when they had an opportunity to actually film this. Wow, wow, man, that's, that, that's awesome. Uh, what, what a wonderful idea. Uh, to include the kids, like the young man said, pandemic, COVID, I ain't never heard of this. And then other brother said, and the school is shut down. Right, <laughs> right, you know, right. What are we going to do? We got, this got to come to an end. Oh, man, that, that's all. You, you, are, you are certainly to be commended, man, on, on how you, you just, the kids just gravitate to you and follow your lead and and they just they just act it out yes. that, that's awesome that's awesome so tell us where where can where can we view the entire video where is it so the um there's a link for the COVID chronicles i usually sh i share it on my facebook page you can also see it on youtube also on youtube there are links for the um the g white academy um, Apollo, live at the Apollo, Showtime at the Apollo, that's also there on YouTube. All of the kids' shows are, are on YouTube as well. You can also go to the Hope of Detroit Academy website, and you can find those shows there as well. That's, that's awesome. And, and what's the name of that page on YouTube? The Hope of, of for the Showtime at the Academy is yeah. G, White, G. White Academy. G. White Academy, Showtime at the Apollo. You can find several shows that I did with uh, G. White Academy there. And there's also the talent shows that I've done at Hope of Detroit Academy. Then I did a show, you mentioned it earlier, called Why Ain't This on the News? And I wrote a show because it seems as if every time we turn on the news, all you hear is just all of this negative information. And it's almost as if there's nothing positive going on in the city of Detroit. So this one show I wrote called Why Ain't This on the News, which told the story about positive young people doing positive things in the city. And there was a, a character who played, an, a, a kid who played an old man who was going from place to place detailing all of the positive things that the, the students are doing in the city. And that's on under G. Edmondson Academy on YouTube as well. So there's several shows under, if you look up Arthur Ray and then Stages with Arthur Ray on YouTube, you can find all of those shows there. So that first one was, as you said, G. Y. The first one is G. White. G. G. White, okay. Yeah, G. White. The G stands for Global Educational Excellence. Global Educational Excellence White Academy. This was a, um, a school organization that has many schools under its umbrella. So Global Educational Excellence has White Academy. It also had Edmondson Academy, which is the school that you came to, as yeah. a matter of fact. You came to Ed Edmondson Academy one year when we also did the Showtime at the Apollo. We were so glad to, and, and happy to have you there, honored to have you there. The students were elated. Oh man, that, that it was it was a thrill, you know, <laughs> to watch those kids enjoy what they were doing, you know, uh, uh, and they were in it too, man. I mean, they 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 had to strut, they had to act down, and and even though they were Panama, they were they were they were sinking right on into 
to their character. And um, it was just simply awesome, man. It, it was just a nice production. And um, like I'm saying, man, these kids, you know. Now, let me to ask you this. Out of, out of all the children you work with, have any of them gone on to actually pursue professional careers? Oh, my God. I have some students who are doing commercials now. I have some students that are on the West Coast that are working in um, movies. I have students in New York working on the stage. And then I have students that are doing uh, working in all kinds of different um, jobs. I was walking down Woodward one day a um, couple years ago, and I ran into one of my students, and he was towering over me. I had no idea who he was. <laughs> he said, hey, Mr. Ray. And I'm like, who was this man with this bass in his voice? He was like, don't you, <laughs> don't you remember me when I was in the seventh grade? And, he, and at this time, he was a, a lieutenant in the Air Force. Wow. And, and just doing so wonderfully well. I have students that are nurses, students that are in med school. It's just, it's just amazing to see what the Lord has done. And I'm so grateful how God has used my life in order to, to touch eternity. Because yes. indeed, that's what a teacher does. You have no idea what, what where a lesson you've taught, how far that lesson will go. And, and more than that, it's teachable moments. Because I plan lesson plans for drama and music all the time. And almost every day, there's something that comes up that I had not planned. It just came from out of nowhere. This is the lesson that God has sent here for mm -hmm. us to learn. And this is something that one kid may need to hear right at that particular moment. So teachable moments are, are so important to me. And I'm grateful that God has used my life in order to um, help to shape young people, you know, because they need us. They need us. And when you came to visit us at Edmondson, that was a teachable moment. Mm -hmm. That was a teachable moment after the show was over because we had lesson about Bishop Andre Woods. They didn't know who Bishop Andre Woods was. Yeah. I did. I did. But they didn't know because they weren't around. Yeah. But, but they learned and they were so impressed when they realized who they had in their presence. Wow. Wow. That's that's so humbling, man. I thank you. Appreciate you for that. But uh, I, I was, I was impressed. I was like, <laughs> wow, the, 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 the world need to see these kids, you know, they were, you know, you couldn't help but get with them. They were so uh, enthusiastic. They, I mean, they were just all in. I mean, and then, like I said, it's, I love, I love watching performers and hearing singers and musicians perform that's enjoying themselves. Yes. yes. You know, cause, cause they make me get with them, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, and that's what those kids, I know. Uh, so for some of them, that might've been their first time uh, being before that kind of audience and, and all of the stage, right, man, they, they weren't scared of nothing. They, they did, <laughs> they came out and did what they had to do and, and loved every minute of it. And it was, it was so great at the end of the finale when, when they all came on stage, smiling, taking their yeah. bow before the heart. Oh man, it was it was just and, and and kudos to and credit to you. It was just a professional production, and and and, and those kids caught on fire. They caught on fire, and yes. and that reminds me of of. <clears throat> What, what the pastor told me way back at the Rhinoceros Club. Yeah. He said, there's a fire on you. He yeah. said, there's a fire. Pastor, pastor Nick said, there's a fire on you. I, I have no clue what he was talking about at that particular moment. But yeah. that same fire has now um, and ignited many of the students. In fact, the young man that you saw in the COVID Chronicles, in the movie, the young guy, Christopher, his name is Christopher. He's, and, and most of the students I work with today are Mexican-American. 95% mm -hmm. of them are Mexican-American. And Christopher is so impassioned about performing that he's confessed to me 
that he's going to be an actor. Yeah. That is that is his life. And his mother and father, they speak no English or very, very little English. They constantly are, are helping him and, and coming to me and trying to express to me how grateful they are for helping their son to find his life path. Yeah. The, the the movie that that I'm going to be shooting tomorrow I'm play, I'm playing a police officer. Can you oh. believe that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm playing a police officer, but Christopher, my student, is going to be an extra in the movie. Yeah. And he was also an extra in another movie that we had an opportunity to put him in. So it's just it's, it's just such a blessing to see him blossom and, and grow into to what God will have him to be. Oh man, that's that is so awesome. That is so awesome, man. That's that's oh, that's just that's great. And 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 uh, you you're gonna start production October first, and. Um, you're going to, you got a, a release date in, in mind and premiere and all of that? Well, I'm I'm just a supporting actor in the movie. It's being directed by Dolores Flynn. And Dolores okay. Flynn is a great director. She just, just last week, she opened um, uh, or premiered, I should say, a movie called Why Me?, when you spoke about that in the introduction, which yeah. is a movie about domestic violence. And it just recently run, won a short film award. It's also now one of the uh, contested films in the Sundance Film Festival. And so Dolores Flynn is, is just a great director. And so I'm, I have been blessed <laughs> mm -hmm. to have a role in this movie she, that when I auditioned, she put me in the role of the, the police officer. And oh. Easy Path is the name of the movie. It tells the story of a young man who um, gets involved in some trouble, but through many turns and twists, he ends up coming out of it. So the movie probably won't be out until sometime next year or something like that because we're just starting production for it. On well, I go to film tomorrow. There's going to be filming that's going to happen many days after that. All right. All, all right. over the all over the city of Detroit. They're Great. filming everywhere. I'm going to be filming in Oak Park. They're going to be in Detroit. They're going to be in Southfield. They're filming everywhere. Great, great. Oh man, what an experience. What an experience. Well, I I I we'll be looking to hear the updates and and when it's all packaged and ready to go, please, please let us know. Certainly. Uh, so we can we can watch you as a police officer. <laughs> It, it, Unbelievable. I never would think I would be a police officer. But as I tell my my drama students, you, you have to be prepared to find whatever character you're playing inside of you. Yeah. So I'm a police officer and I'm a and I'm a good one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. Uh, yeah. Well, listen, tell us tell us if uh, what's on your agenda. We're about to go out of this year and what you have on your agenda musically. Okay. So um, at the school, we're in the process of um, rehearsing for our winter recital, winter concert. So as you said in the introduction, I direct the high school choirs and the middle school choirs as well. So they're just having a ball learning from me <laughs> and I'm having a ball learning from them. You know, <laughs> I, I, I've i become um, well abreast of the TikTok and, and, oh, the, man. And, and the music of the young people. And so we're kind of infusing where I am with where they are. And so the recital is going to be something to see. It's really going to be something that's going to be exciting. Uh, it won't be a traditional concert where you have a choir standing on stage and I'm standing there directing them because yeah. with my theatrical foundation and including um, their input as well, we're going to do something different. So that's going to be in November. And then in December at the school, 
um, we're producing a play called Meeting Me. And Meeting Me is a show about a young student who meets himself when he's 40 years old. And wow. so you can only imagine, you can only imagine the drama that occurs when a kid meets himself at 40 and the 40 year old person is trying to help and influence the younger person uh, about what's going to happen in life and that kind of thing. So it's a very interesting script very interesting script and so oh, man. I'm, I'm looking forward to we're going to be holding auditions for that in the upcoming weeks at the school and that will be on december uh 22nd wow so, wow that's man you got you got it you got a, an agenda yes and, uh, i know all of it's going to be i mean top of the line top-notch people uh talented gifted and uh it's going to be well produced now that's going to be on the 22nd at the, at which school would that would be at? And that's going to be at Hope of Detroit Academy. Hope of Detroit is, Academy. Yes, Hope of Detroit Academy. Great, 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 great. Man, I'm telling you that this, this has been so awesome. And, and listen, what I want you to do, because you, you have such an impressive background experience, wealth of knowledge gained over the years. I mean, in in the educational system and in the church world i mean just just music across the board what what kind of wisdom and knowledge would you share with uh this next generation up and coming musicians who would like uh whether their church or whatever to just get into music and production and even acting period yeah. Well, my words of advice is, number one, stay humble. Always realize that what you have, the Lord has given it to you for the service of other people. So never get ahead that so be it that you can't get it out of the room. Remember that you are there to serve others. That's the reason why we're here on this planet. And, and beyond that, expect challenges. There's always going to be challenges. And some people call them problems. I like to call them challenges because it's something that can be dealt with. But you have to look at a challenge as an opportunity. And once you realize that every challenge that come comes to grow you and glow you, and you've got to find the blessing in that challenge or the blessing in that opportunity for you to move to the next level, then you will realize that you can make it. It's all about what you think. It's all about how you choose to look at it. Every challenge can be an opportunity, but only if you choose to look at it that way. One person can go outside in the rain and say, it's a horrible day. It's, it's a thunderstorm. It's, it's horrible out here. And somebody else can go outside in that same day and see it totally different. The grass is going to grow. We need to have this rain. I mean, it's just all in how you choose to look at it. Choose to look at things in a way that's going to grow and glow you. That would be my advice. That's good enough, man. <laughs> grow and glow you, you know. It's all in how you look at it. Oh, man. This this, this is so, so awesome. And, and we certainly appreciate you sharing just just only a midget of what God has blessed you to do. And uh, we've got to do this again. We've Amen. got to do this again as you progress and put your productions together. Now, now, now at these productions, you're going to have one in November and then one in December. Yes. Now, will there be admission to these? Uh, there will not be. Okay. Great. There will not be there. We we don't charge at the school, so the yeah. community is invited to come and support our young people. All right. Yeah. And that's what it's about. Come and support our young people. People who are doing positive things. The show that I wrote. Um, why ain't this on the news? We can always talk about negativity. Yeah. Let's come and support positivity. And, and that negative stuff will be on the news. Yes, it will be on the news. It will be on the news. They will find time 
to broadcast that. And, and that's the issue for me because I believe that the things that you think about, the things that you focus on, you put energy in, those are the things that's going to grow. So why not focus on positive? focus on the positivity of young people this is indeed what we want to grow this is what yeah. we want to think about the word says as a man think so is he yeah yeah that's that's so awesome oh man so uh november and december there's going to be some great productions friends and you don't want to listen if you miss any part of this uh, it will replay and then it'll be on our YouTube channel, uh, Fellowship of Music and Arts. And uh, uh, we're going to rebroadcast it. And uh, you you would want to hear uh, what uh, the one and only Arthur Ray has shared with us tonight. Oh, so many, so many great uh, nuggets of wisdom. And as he shared uh, some of his experiences and how the Lord has blessed him to come up musically. Uh, and what I love about this brother is he has a stellar reputation. Uh, he has a great name in this city among uh, the music community, the educators, just all around. And again, we don't hear about positive images such as this as we should. Uh, now, if something was breaking out at the school, the news media be running over there uh, with their cameras, right, exactly. with their microphones, trying to stick it in everybody's face. But uh, uh, we want to challenge them when they announce these productions, these young people, that somebody from all of our network stations, you know, take time and go uh, give give them. If you don't give them nothing but just the honorable mention, yes. go there and, and show a clip of them on stage doing Please. something positive yes, yes that 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 would be so great so great well listen man you blessed me tonight and um thank you for taking this time to share with us and um we'll have to plan to do this again uh, any, any parting words before we go um just be blessed Bishop Woods, I appreciate you, and I'm so grateful that you invited me to come and become um, a part of the spotlight in the Fellowship of Music and Arts. I mean, this is such an honor, such an honor, and thank you so much. And I'm going to take my shingles <laughs> and go and nurse them back so that I can get back to 100% so I can do yeah, what I man. need to do and do what God would have me to do. All right, all right. Thank you so much, and thank all of you that, that viewed and shared with us. Uh, we're going to pray before we go, and then yes. um, we want you to stay with us right here on Spotlight on Ministry. Go to our YouTube channel and subscribe. Follow Bishop Andre Woods on all of my platforms, and uh, I certainly will appreciate that. Let's pray. Father, we thank yes, you yes, for the privilege of fellowship. We thank you for our dear brother, Arthur oh. Ray, and how you blessed him, how you brought him. We thank you for what you've done, for what you're doing, and what you're going to do in his life. Now, we pray, God, if there's a need that he has, that you will meet every need in his life by your riches according to your word, God, that you will give it uh, and you will bless, you know, and we thank you, Father, for how you've blessed him to, to teach and to train and to mentor and to be an example to young people Thank you for his music and ministry, God, uh, for the labor and he, how he served many years, many pastors and churches. And so, Father, we pray your blessings upon him now. We pray Psalms 90 and 17. Let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon him. Establish the work of thy hands upon him. Yea, Lord, the work of thy hands establish thou it. So we pray that whatever he put his hands to, God, you will cause it to prosper. Amen. We pray yes, that you will protect him and keep him. Continue to download creativity and inspiration. Oh, just illuminate his mind, God, that he can go forth and write and create uh, even the more now. We thank you for how you're going to go before him and make easy and successful his way. Now, bless him mentally, spiritually, physically, emotionally, and financially. 
This is your servant's prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And Amen. 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 All right, God. my brother. I appreciate you, man. All right. All Let's right, Bishop Woods. Let's stay Absolutely. In all yes, right. Yes, sir. Blessings to all. Be blessed. I command the blessings of the Lord to overtake you. That is my prayer for you till next time. We love you. Amen. Be blessed.